Hey guys, Stealth here. Welcome back to episode two of the mostly historic German 1940s campaign. Mostly historic? Yeah, because it's tough getting a fully historic fleet together. It is very tough to do. Now, in the previous episode, uh, I highly recommend you watch that one. I have designed the Bismarck Turpitz battleships, the Leipzig class battlecruiser, the Admiral Hipper class, the Deutschland class, and the V3 destroyers. No light cruisers? No, because I wasn't too happy about what the light cruiser could do. So I decided to just forego light cruisers altogether. Let's start the campaign up and see what we get. Uh, we are definitely outnumbered. We only have 27 ships out here. And when you look at the rest of the fleets, the guys that we're facing, that is a lot of ships. But that means that we just have a lot of targets, so it's mostly fine. I have a shipyard size of 82,250 tons, but I'm not using it yet. What I want to do now is change that, because I'm starting out with a historic German fleet. But we're going to build on that. So let's see how much money I have left in a monthly balance after I put a lot in crew training and transport capacity. Still 175 million per, so that's good. That means that I can bolster my ships, my fleet with more ships. Uh, right now I only have one Deutschland class, I think. Class, yeah, one Deutschland. We're going to build a couple more. Because considering the amount... Yeah, yeah. Considering the amount of ships that the other guys have, especially light cruisers, we will probably see a lot of light cruisers. And that is something that the Deutschland can probably engage very easily. I want two more. There. It's going to cost me 9 million a month, but I still have 152 million balance in the plus. What else would I like? Give me another battle cruiser. Go. Um, give me another couple of destroyers. Oh, screw off. There. Build, build, build. Boom. Okay. I'm still 120 million in the plus. That's a lot. If I boost this to 100%, I'm going to be researching stuff like crazy, and I still have money to spare. So that sounds good. If I would want to upgrade my shipyard to include another 16,000 tons, it's going to cost me 160 million over 24 months. Yeah, that's affordable. So let's do that. And I think, I think we can start to deploy some battle groups. Where are my guys at? I didn't deploy them manually, so the AI did that for me. Uh, we're going to get the guys from Palau and Danzig together in the Baltic. And try to not get engaged there. All of you, out. You, out. They're going to join up. In Kiel, we have the Admiral Hipper, the Thor, a couple of destroyers. All of you over there. Well, not all of you, actually. Oh, and the Bismarck and the Turpets are there, too. Yeah, this is going to be a battle group. We're going to try and look for the British. We're also going to try and look for the British with the Württemberg. Just the one. And you're going to go all the way over there. Solo. It's a risky venture, but if it works, we can probably eliminate a pretty decent target. We got the Kaiser Wilhelm der Große, as well as the Graf Spee and the V2. The three of you are going to be operating in front of the Dutch coast here. Um, V3 and V6 can just operate in the North Sea. I'm mostly going to just try and get a presence there. I might not be able to engage anything just yet, but that's fine. V4 and V9 out. And where do I still have ships? I don't need to deploy everything just yet. I don't have to deploy everything just yet. When it comes to research, what do I value? Big guns? Mark 4 15-inch guns. Yes, I am using almost exclusively 15-inch guns. So boosting this would improve all my battleships and my battle cruisers. Explosives, meaning modern triple base, meaning more shell pen. What I'm currently using is two powder because it gives me the more uh, shell pen, especially with the light shells. This, 
It's not a priority for me. Not a priority. Hull strengthening, yes. Strictly means your ships are going to be more survivable by a uh, half percent. Scratch that. I think we've completed everything from cruiser designs. Because oh, it doesn't seem to be researching anything. Turret mechanisms, range finders, we got all the advanced stuff already done. Torpedo tubes means the game doesn't even know. Okay, I'm just going to run with one priority then on the big guns. That's fine. If I boost shells. More gun range, more gun pen, more fire chance in the AP. Okay, we'll just leave it as is. Next turn. When are the Brits going to come out to play? When can we expect them? We immediately get our first encounter. The solo battle cruiser that we sent out, the Württemberg, has encountered the heavy cruisers Bedford, Niobe, and Royal Arthur, and the light cruisers Achilles in Canada. This should be an interesting fight. The Württemberg is faster than the heavy cruisers because these guys can run at 30.3 knots and I can do 35. The light cruisers can do 34.6, so they're faster. They also get 20 torpedo tubes in quintuples and then another 16 in quadruples and 10 underwaters. So they're massive torpedo hazards and I would love to stay out of range. The heavy cruisers also get a lot of torpedo tubes and carry 7 inch guns, so they're not that dangerous. Uh, when it comes to what I want to sink, the light cruisers most, because they're 84 million a pop and these are only 53. This is probably due to pretty high speed and torpedo launchers. So, first fight of the war, Württemberg, one of my O-class-ish battlecruisers. Here she is, the O-class battlecruiser. 15-inch guns, firing light shells and reloading every 30 seconds. Considering the threat level, um, I think HE should do it. And the shorter range, 5-inch, AP would do it. Depending on the range. But again, I really, really, really do not want to get too close. Especially with the turning circle that bad. And no sonar. No sonar. Enemy to the southwest. Should have a bearing and a range. So we have a radar system on this thing. Generation 3 radar at that. Smoke screens anywhere? There. About 40 clicks out. Okay, give me a minute. Here we go. Contact with the enemy. It's a heavy cruiser. It's several of their heavy cruisers, in fact. And with those 7-inch guns, they're not in range yet. Nor, I hope, are the torpedoes. My range currently is 19.5 kilometers, which puts me very nicely in the range of the 15-inchers. Uh, so we're going to turn to port. So we're going to slow down to full speed. I'm just going to hammer these cruisers. What this battle cruiser is designed to do. Well, sort of. It's designed mostly as a convoy raider. Just that we haven't quite found the convoy, but we have found a bunch of warships. Now keep in mind this ship is being crewed by cadets. Translation inaccurate as well. Extremely inaccurate. Something else about this ship, it is priced at 96 million, which doesn't put it that far away from their light cruisers. Like their light cruisers are not that much more expensive. Oh, sorry, not that much cheaper, actually. 0.8%, wow. Don't bother with the light cruisers just yet. They're too smoked up, they're too far away. Go to times five. This is why I bring more shells. This is exactly why I bring more shells. I have, plenty, I have plenty of ammo left, but the light cruisers are probably going to warrant HE. Oh, you're shooting back at me now, are you? 1% <coughs> chance, come on. Fifteen kilometers out, I can bend 29 inches of armor. Should be more than enough. Of 
Location, 53%. I, our accuracy is still so bad. Oh, we're on fire. That is unfortunate. 14 clicks out. Any chance I can hit that? 1.1. Sure. Let's take a couple of shots at it and see if we can actually get some accuracy. Being very rough sea waves. Oh, look at all these modifiers. Is there something that I feel the game still needs to work on? Because it says that it has very rough sea waves, but it just doesn't look like it. This looks pretty smooth, in fact. It looks like the Württemberg is not really struggling with any kind of these waves. So rough sea waves, or even very rough sea waves. Rainy weather. Sorry, this is beautiful weather. 12 clicks out. I'm trying to speed up ID by getting somewhat close and then veering off again. I don't want to get hit by a torpedo, but I want to see what sort of range they have. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if they are going to be in range of those torpedoes soon. At the very least, they're in range of the 5 inch. There, Achilles. Torpedoes have been launched at 21.8 kilometers. Okay. Cute. I'm gonna turn it away. I'm not at all interested in staying this close to the Achilles. Chance to pen is 17%? How? You got no armor. Remind me why the pen chance is so bad, please? Because this makes no sense. Like, what part of the ship, according to you, can I not pen? And I have a massive chance to pen the battle, the, the, the heavy cruiser. <clears throat> How many turps do they carry? Enough for a long time. Okay. And they are probably running at top speed. 32, 33. I'm running at 28, so I'm running slightly slower than they are. Please, actually get in the zip code of the Achilles, if you don't mind. That'd be great. No? Look at that! I thought they fixed this. The annoying part is it says range found. Yeah. About that. Because I kind of doubt it. I kind of doubt it. Aft belt, 6 inch. Effectively 12. And change. So yeah, I've taken some damage. Nothing serious. The one thing I'm a little concerned about is that I would take rudder damage. Which would be pretty bad news when it comes to dodging torpedoes. Billy's is still 9 clicks out. They're beginning slightly crispy. 1% structural loss. I have done zero damage. I haven't hit anything. 5% chance to hit. 2.5 on the 5 inches. Hit something! Good god! There. Parcel pen. And now it's smoking up again. That's at least much closer to the Achilles. That's a start. I hit him with a 15 inch shell and be done with it. That was a 5 incher actually, but it did cause flooding. That's good. What about these heavies? They have also launched torpedoes. 24 inch? Holy moly. Let's turn back to port. So I've been traveling in this direction for a while, and I'm concerned that those torpedoes are well on their way towards me now. They reload. It's probably a half hour. Yeah. The Achilles seem to be struggling with that flooding a little bit more than I would like. They just launched another torpedo. Bow tube. So they're bow on. So the bow tube is the only one that they can launch. Don't turn that much, though. Range, 8-5. Good. Ugh, oh, 
early campaign, these ships are so terrible. 9% chance to hit. Achilles seems to have taken enough damage to start turning back. But... I doubt it is just that, because the Achilles has also launched her torpedoes. That was what she was trying to do. Another 5-inch hit. These 15s have fired... So, they fired 220, they haven't hit a single thing. Good grief. Wait, 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 wait. This is your... Oh, hello. This is your heavy cruiser without armor? No, this has armor. I saw the light cruiser selected. That was pretty close, that torp. Minus 40% visibility. Lovely. Go on. Hey, we hit something with a 15-inch shell. Only a partial pen, though. Let's switch back to AP. Boom! Full pen. Right through the main belt. Port Arthur is... F sorry, Royal Arthur is flooding. Jesus. I have... Taken a bit more damage than I'd like. Royal Arthur... Where is that even going? Good God, man. Yeah, the Royal Arthur just dumped more torpedoes in the water. Okay, we'll steer back to starboard again. Now, with a little bit of damage, or a little, of, a very, very few hits, I've done a lot more damage to them than they have done to me. So, at least that's something. We're still at nine clicks. Canada just launched torpedoes at me. Niobe has not launched torpedoes at all. There she go. Oh, boo, no! No! That hurts like hell. Thought I didn't have to equip these guys with sonar. Well, yeah, you do. Because <coughs> otherwise you'll just get hit. Two engines are out. The ship is flooding. I'm gonna have to go slow. Focus all your efforts on killing the Royal Arthur. Accuracy is bad because we have damage and stability of 24%. Oh, this battle cruiser is going to be out of action for a while. Canada has also just launched her torps. Hard back to port. Achilles is still fighting her flooding? That's interesting. The secondaries on the Canada. Yep, flooding on the Canada. Very good. Give me everything on the Canada. 8.4. She's going to turn back to port and bring her other torpedo launch to the bear. There, she just did. She just did. Turn back to starboard again. We still have two damaged engines, and it looks like the ship might not get them back, which means my speed is limited to 15 knots. Now, I'm giving them a bloody nose, but they're all alive. And they're just torpedo spamming like there's no tomorrow. But at this rate, there isn't. At least not for this ship. So destroy a torpedo launcher. That's good. What's your anti-flood capabilities? Anti-flood 2. Mm. Regret. Early campaign, it's always difficult to hit ships, so I have a tendency to close in a little more than I should. And because of that, I start taking torpedo hits. If you don't, then you're just going to not get any kind of hits. You're not going to get any kind of damage on them. So it's always a terrible trade-off. But being forced to dance with the torpedoes... Three heavy cruisers and a bunch of lights is no fun either. I am concerned for this battle cruiser. I am very concerned. The 
15, no, 13 knots is what we can do. Yes, partial pen. That was a 15 inch with a partial pen. Because you have no armor. Oh, you dumped another torpedo in the water. Okay, we do a gentle turn. Switch fire to the Bedford. Niobe still hasn't launched her torps. Something at least, I guess. Select your own ammunition. Royal Arthur still reloading. Phillies are still lumbering in the back. Still trying to flood. Wow. And I still have no idea where the torpedoes are. There. Overpen. There's the torpedo. That was the single launcher from the nose of the Canada. Not good. This, this fight is. What the fuck? It's not good. Right a bit more. Surprised Niobe never launched her torpedoes. Not sad about it, just surprised. Come on. Destroyed a torpedo launcher. Very good. Switch to the Niobe. If she's fully broadside and closer. Niobe just launched her torps. Turn. There's the Canada again. She also just launched her torps. Fun. Fun for the whole family. Whoa! No! Oh god. This battle cruiser is probably fucked. That one torpedo hit might have been survivable. Two? That's bad. Oh, well, there's more. What I also quite hate about the AI is that they just torpedo spam. I mean, their guns are utterly ineffective. But their torpedo launchers are ridiculously deadly. Marshall. Secondaries on Canada. We just ran out of ammunition for the AP on the mains. HE should be enough to pen the cruiser's side. Especially the bow. Bow and aft. About six inches of armor. I can pen that. 10 kilometer ranges and less. No, it's 17,000 meters actually. Bedford just launched. Niobe launched a while ago. Maintain turn. Just gradual, 4 degrees left rudder. Just that my buoyancy is terrible <clears throat> and not going back up. My god. I'm gonna lose a battle cruiser the right the first battle. Oh, there's the torpedo. And friends. Any chance the Achilles could sink? That'd be fantastic. I cannot hit it at this range. But... Well, not with the secondary, anyway. Maybe with the mains. That's a pretty piss-poor chance. Hello? Ships just refusing to fire at the Achilles. Is that because we're listing over to starboard too much? Like, the turrets flat out refuse to even target that thing. Okay. 
That's interesting. I didn't think that made that that system made it into the game yet. Now the good news is about this battle that at least I did quite a bit of damage against their ships. So that means that the Canada, the Achilles, the Royal Arthur, they're going to be out of action for a while. Reducing the pressure that the Royal Navy can put in the North Sea. Or rather, I was almost in the Atlantic. Come on, hit something! What's with the secondaries? The list on this battle cruiser is so bad. Look at this guy. Things going to be pretty painful and slow death. Ah, at least the three inch is still opening up. That's something. And one of the mains is as well. Oh, hello, Torp. Got awful close. I'm just firing, what, HE, right? Yeah. The torp. Oh, a whole bunch more. Somehow there was a gap for this ship. Partial pen. Six kilometer range. I have less and less and less range to actually get some time to dodge. Especially with my damaged rudder. Now I'm listing again too much to actually get my guns to be useful. Turn back. There's another single launch, I think, from Canada. Five clicks out. Hard port rudder, if you can. Hard left rudder, I should say. 4.6 kilometers out. At this range, 7-inch guns can be extremely annoying to deal with. Because they fire fast and they have enough pen at 4 kilometer range to go through the side of my ship, I suppose. Yeah, more than enough. Well, one broadside of torpedo salvo and I'm dead. Come on. We need to present our stern towards them. I know it's not great, but at least then we have some sleek profile. Because the Niobe is about to launch. And also at this range, I'm going to just obliterate that guy with HE. Oh, so close. Torps. What the hell? Achilles is still almost flooding. Damn. Boom. Partial pen. Fire. Niobe just launched. Oh, here come the torps. That's gonna hit my stern. No, it's not. Very close. That hurt them a lot. That first flooding. Badly. And their rudder is out just as much as mine is. Canada just sent another salvo my way. Fantastic. Let's dodge that first before we even think about retaliating. Achilles is down to 6%? Wow. Ooh. Now, at least the Canada is almost out of torpedoes, but I'm almost out of health. Oh. That is bad. <clears throat> yeah, I'm done. Great battle. Great start of a campaign. Well played. Fantastic. Job done. Yikes. 1383 victory points for the British. Ouch.
And I had the advantage, if it wasn't for all those damn torpedoes and the complete and utter shit accuracy of this utterly trash crew. Right. We might be able to vindicate some of our honor with the V3 and the V6 against the Indus. Because we can dodge their torpedoes and we can shoot them down. Well, I mean, not in the sense of a fighter plane, but we have guns. The enemy's to the south. Let's go there. Take care of business. Finally, after chasing this thing down for almost 50 minutes and constantly being shot at, I now have eyes on the enemy light cruiser. She's 8.3 kilometers away from the V6. At this range, I can open up with the 5 incher, at least the single, and apparently the duals. There we go, they're opening up as well. This ship has AP shells, which do a substantial amount of damage, or at least a substantial amount of pen. At 7,500 meter range, they can pen 7.3 inches. But I already know that that light cruiser has essentially no armor. My explosive does almost no pen, but does a lot more damage, and this ship is firing full incendiary shells. So if I'm at all capable of getting a couple of hits on that light cruiser, I will burn it down. And I will burn it down quick. Because that is what these light cruisers are designed to do. Sorry, these destroyers of mine are designed to do. For some reason or another, they're turning. The only thing that would make this light cruiser turn is a torpedo attack. Now, as opposed to the battle cruiser that we saw before, this guy is mobile. The V6 can dodge. And the V6 can spot torpedoes at a very good distance. Range 6.2. Partial pen. You. Switch to AP for a little bit. Torpedo spot it. See? That's pretty much where the V6 was going. That's what they were trying to do. They're still fighting back with 12 6-inch guns and a bunch of secondaries, but it's not that serious. Let's attack them with torpedoes as well. Uh, range is pretty similar. Go. We might be able to get a cross tarp on them. 5-8 versus your, what was it, 6-4? Six, 6-4. Four? Six, four. Let's do it. Let's go for the torpedo attack. 96% ID. Cruiser is ever so slightly turning to port? No. Steady on our course. Torpedo in the water. Hello, Indus. Still has a lot of torpedoes. Still has zero armor. Chance to pen should be about 100. Yeah, not that much, but pretty decent. What's your chance to hit me? Pretty terrible. 1.5% versus my 4. Now these torpedoes are sneaky. Minus 73%. They probably have sonar. Sonar 3 even. But a 717 turning circle. That's pretty bad. Select your own ammunition. It's pretty bad. So these torpedoes could cause issues for her. The torpedoes here are also in the water from the V3. Pick your own ammo. We're going to gun this thing down and get some... Revenge for the loss of the battle cruiser. I wouldn't be surprised that they're going to start detecting torpedoes right about now. That looks like it could be too late. Indus has detected. What are you going to do about it? Going to starboard. Don't tell me it's going to follow in this gap. Nope, it hit one torp. Wow. That was a very high-end torpedo, apparently, for 2,700 damage. Causing the destruction of three quarters of the ship. Causing flooding and causing rudder damage. Nice. We got this guy. There goes the Indus. Any moment now. Point three, point two, point one. Go on. There you go. The Indus has been eliminated. That was a good torpedo hit. That was a great torpedo hit. Okay. 
1,922 victory points for me, zero for them. So we got some revenge for the loss of the battle cruiser. Excellent. It's just that trading a light cruiser for a battle cruiser, not a great trade. Now we have a strike coming up, but I'm going to do that in the next episode. For now, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, by all means, let me know down below in the comments. And I'll see you guys soon for more episodes.